like to touch on is the myth of transparency. And here, you know, we often say, just be transparent and speak the truth, even if this causes stress. Well, transparency helps up to a point. The reality is that every one of these, these, these myths is true in of itself, but what I'm revealing is that it's not entirely true because stress can really impact the brain. The first thing that stress does is it prompts habit behavior in brains. So if you think about it, you wanna make a change. You say, let's make this change. But the moment you turn on stress in the brain, at a certain level, obviously there, there are helpful things about stress. This is called U stress. EU stress is the helpful kind of stress. Distress is, is, is the thing that, that prompts this habit behavior in humans. And people will go back to doing exactly what they were doing before the evaluation. If you look at stress and habit, what you'll see is that when you are stressed, your body releases cortisol. And this cortisol turns off the active thinking circuit and it turns on the habit circuit. So, so often when someone is stressed, they're, they're not even gonna listen to what you're saying because the stress turns off the active thinking circuit. As a result, they go back to doing what they are used to doing and you cannot access new neural systems. So for you to think about this, you know, part of what you're doing, it's, it's really quite profound. Right? You're actually impacting this person's body and you're impacting their brain. You know, one of the reasons I started this virtual reality company was because I, want, I wanted to highlight the fact that, that by, by reducing stress and anxiety, you can potentially reverse the negative changes on genes. Studies have shown that stress and anxiety lock genes. They call these epigenetic changes. And when they lock these genes, this is what predisposes to, to chronic disease, like cancer, heart disease, stroke, and neurodegenerative disease. So you know, I, I gave a talk recently in Norway that was entitled, uh, you didn't sign up to be a doctor, but you are. But the reality is that the stress that we cause ourselves and others is changing our genes and it's also setting us up for chronic disease. So take a brief look at this video just to prompt some of those ideas and anchor them. Are you sleeping restlessly, feeling irritable or moody, forgetting little things and feeling overwhelmed and isolated? Don't worry, we've all been there you're probably just stressed out. Stress isn't always a bad thing. It can be handy for a burst of extra energy and focus, like when you're playing a competitive sport or have to speak in public. But when it's continuous- Where are you going? I have to go to the doctor's day in, day out. It actually go. begins to change your brain. Chronic stress, like being overworked or having Listen. arguments at home, can affect brain size and structure and how it functions right down to the level of your genes. Stress begins with something called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, a series of interactions between endocrine glands in the brain and on the kidney, which controls your body's reaction to stress. When your brain detects a stressful situation, your HPA axis is instantly activated and releases a hormone called cortisol, which primes your body for instant action. But high levels of cortisol over long periods of time wreak havoc on your brain. For example, chronic stress increases the activity level and number of neural connections in the amygdala, your brain's fear center. And as levels of cortisol rise, electric signals in your hippocampus, the part of the brain associated with learning, memories, and stress control, deteriorate. The hippocampus also inhibits the activity of the HPA axis. So when it weakens, so does your ability to control your stress. That's not all though. Cortisol can literally cause your brain to shrink in size. Too much of it results in the loss of synaptic connections between neurons and the shrinking of your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that regulates behaviors like concentration, decision-making, judgment, and social interaction. It also leads to fewer new brain cells being made in the hippocampus. This means chronic stress might make it harder for you to learn and remember things. And so if you think about this in the context of an evaluation, right, both for yourself and the evaluant, if you are stressed or if your evaluant is stressed, it changes the brain structure and function, and you have less capacity to think, make decisions, or change. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you know, how can I not be stressed? Like, I'm in a high-stress job. It's not about the fact that the stress is not going to be always be a constant threat. 
It's about your relationship with it and whether you are realizing on a day-to-day -day basis that this is actually changing your cellular matrix, it's changing your brain and it's changing your body. So the implications for evaluation here are to approach the context as a stress-free zone, to connect with the excitement of your combined mission and vision, and to create a cognitively enhancing environment rather than one that stops the person or the recipient thinking. The conclusion here is, is your evaluation approach stress-free? Are you enhancing the cognition of yourself and the other person? And what are you actually doing to achieve this? Now, there's a lot to talk about here. I mean, part of what I do is talk about this kind of stress management, but I'm just highlighting the areas where I think you can, you can actually take a look. 